Welcome to our lecture online. Here we're going to take a look of how to find the direction cosines of some arbitrary vector. And there we have the vector 2i minus 4j plus 4k. And for our benefit, I've taken a, made a little drawing of it. So now you can see that there is an angle between the vector and the x-axis, an angle between the vector and the y-axis, and an angle between the vector and the z-axis. So we'll call those theta sub x, theta sub y, and theta sub z. And then to find the direction cosines, we have to understand what they are. And, and essentially what they are is that the direction cosine is the cosine of theta sub x, the cosine of theta sub y, and the cosine of theta sub z. So we have the notation we used in the previous video where we have the alpha sub x, alpha sub y, alpha sub z, which are the direction cosines, but they can also be defined as the cosine of the angle the cosine of the angle, the cosine of the angle between the vector and the x, y, and z axis. And also the direction cosine is therefore defined by the magnitude of vector in the x direction divided by the magnitude of the vector, the magnitude of vector in the y direction divided by the magnitude of vector, and the magnitude of vector in the z direction divided by the vector. So now we have the vector. Oh, and one more thing is that the definition also is that the direction cosine squared in each direction added together must add up to one and so we're going to check that as well after we find the direction cosines of this vector so what we need to do first is since we need to uh, find the direction cosines by taking the magnitude of the x y and z component of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector we have to find the magnitude of that vector so the magnitude of the vector v is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of the components so that's v sub x squared plus v sub y squared plus v sub z squared. In other words, this is equal to the square root of 2 squared plus a minus 4 squared plus another 4 squared. So that would be equal to the square root of 4 plus 16 plus 16, that's 32 plus 4, which is equal to the square root of 36, which is equal to 6. So there's the magnitude of that vector v. Now to find the three direction cosines, we can then say that the cosine of theta sub x, which is the direction cosine relative to the x-axis, is v sub x over v, which is equal to 2 divided by 6, which is 1 third. So there's the first direction cosine. Now we find the second direction cosine, cosine of theta sub y, which is v sub y over v, which is equal to minus 4 over 6, which is a minus 2 thirds. So there's our second direction cosine and then finally the cosine of theta sub z which is equal to v sub z over v which is 4 divided by 6 which is 2 thirds. So here are the three direction cosines of that particular vector. Essentially they give you a feel for how big the angle is between the x, y and z components of the vector and or no I should say between the vector and the x, y and z axis. Now, what we should also do is find the angles associated with that. So we're going to find theta sub x, theta sub y, theta sub z. And let's first check to see if we got the correct values by plugging them into this equation. So in this case, we have 1 third squared plus a negative 2 thirds squared plus a positive 2 thirds squared. That should equal 1. And so this becomes 1 ninth plus 4 ninths plus 4 ninths, which is 1, and sure enough, 1 equals 1. So we verified that, yes, indeed, when we squared the direction cosines and add them together, they should add up to 1. And finally, let's find the angles associated with those three direction cosines. So we can say that theta sub x is equal to the inverse cosine of the direction cosine, which is 1 third. And let's see here, I need a calculator for that. So we have 1 divided by 3, we take the inverse cosine of that, that gives us 70.5 uh, 70 uh, 70 degrees. Then we take theta sub y, which is equal to the inverse cosine of a minus 2 thirds. And yes, the minus is important here, so 2 divided by 3, put a minus in front of that, take the inverse cosine, that gives us 131.8 degrees. And finally, theta sub z, which is equal to the inverse cosine of a positive two-thirds. 
And so we have 2 divided by 3, take the inverse cosine of that, gives us 48.2 degrees. Notice that conceptually, that the angles are not the direction cosines. The direction cosines are the cosines of those angles, but then if we take the inverse uh, cosine of the, of the three, that gives us then the three angles associated with the direction cosines. So the direction cosines are going to be numbers between zero and one, could be between zero and negative one, and they're then associated with the three angles. And to verify that we have the correct direction cosines, we plug them into this equation. And that's how we find the direction cosines.